guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my visit to Amsterdam but more specifically about some tricks and tips that might make your visit hopefully a lot easier and smoother. These are the 10 tips and tricks that you need to know before going to Amsterdam. So let's get started. Number one is the accommodation. You can find tons of websites with tons of offers that vary in price of course depending on the time of the year you're planning your trip to Amsterdam you will find that there are tons of hotels on this website that are at a decent cost and the rooms look really really nice and modern but the catch is they are not anywhere near town center do not make my mistake and let that put you off because it's honestly really not that bad the hotel that we've been to um, didn't have a great room, didn't have a big room, but it was in the central area. So that meaning you were about 7 minutes by car or 5 minutes by tram near our hotel to the dam, which is close to everything. What we noticed in our trip when we took a cab and we went to a mall that was outside Amsterdam and that wasn't planned because we didn't realize it was gonna be that far. On our way back, we realized that there are trams that go directly from the mall, which was outside Amsterdam, into a town center. And that took only 20 to 30 minutes by tram. On the way from the mall to town center, we came across some of the hotels that we saw on the website that we thought they looked great and modern and they have a good price but they're far away from town center and guess what there's only like a 15 minutes 20 minutes trip by tram but the tram station is right outside the hotel so we would have ended up a lot better and a lot more comfortable if we would have gone with that choice and there were also about 300 quid cheaper than the hotel where we stayed and the quality difference was like this it was massive if you are with a group of friends and you don't really care where you're staying you're just there to sleep and then go out and have fun and explore the city in that situation there are small rooms that are right in the middle of everything by central station and for example we went for a drink one evening and there was a restaurant there and it also had some rooms available for very very cheap price like nothing compared to the hotels if you're just there with your friends and you don't mind sharing a bunk bed and just crashing there for a few nights then you'll be fine number two transportation i covered a little bit of that in the accommodation section but i'm gonna go back and tell you that when we arrived from the airport unlike in any other city we didn't take the taxi we went by train because it's so so simple and it's so convenient once you arrive at the airport there's a train station right there you just go at the machine you get your ticket again very simple they speak English they have most signs most machines everything is in English so you go, you go to the machine and it's as simple as I want to go from the airport to Amsterdam Central Station and that's it let's say the cab would have been about 40 or 50 euros and this was for two tickets about 10 euros another thing I would like to talk about and cover in this section is cab drivers right so at Central Station there are two massive hotels in front of the hotels there are cab drivers that are stationed there so you think well we had a couple drinks we can't be bothered to go look for a cab and why go anywhere else when there are cabs right here so we just jump in do not do that for one main reason the cab drivers that are stationed right outside the hotels there they go on only one route so no shortcuts on a trip that was seven minutes for us it took us about 25 minutes one because he didn't take any shortcuts he went on his own route and second because he had no idea where he was going so that's another minus they don't really know where the hotels are very well it took him about 25 minutes to get to our hotel of course we had to pay the price for it so a normal cab drive would have been about uh, 10 euros 10 to 15 euros and this drive was about 25 euros so there you have it and it's not worth it really because you can just cross the street and you can flag down a cab there are tons of cabs available 
and you can just plug one down and they'll take you for a normal price on a normal route. Maybe you will find tons of friendly people but from my own experience I can tell you do not wait for the receptionist at the hotel to give you much information. For instance, we ordered the taxi not knowing how far away the mall was at the reception and we told them where we wanted to go when they called for the cab and no one even told us that two minutes away there was a tram station that could have taken us for five euros right outside the mall apart from the fact that they gave us a map and they told us where the town center was there was no additional information or suggestions or tips whatsoever from the reception so if you want to know anything just go and specifically ask for them at the reception because they will most likely not tell you anything without you asking them first Number three, best places to eat. There are loads and loads and loads of places to eat where you can just have snacks and you can eat for cheaper. But eating cheap really falls into the snack category. By that I mean loads of places where they sell chips in a cone and pastries and cakes and cookies and tarts and slices of pizza. So you would definitely not be starving. They're not incredibly cheap, not like in other cities, but they are a lot cheaper than going to eat out at a restaurant, which probably most people do when they're going to visit a city. We had a mixed grill um, on one of the side streets and it was about 15 euros with chips and salad. If you go for a cocktail say, there's gonna be one price by the piazza where there are statues and it's an open space and it's clearly a lot nicer than the side street. There's gonna be a different price on the small streets. I paid for instance for a cocktail 15 euros on the marketplace and I paid about 8 euros on one of the side streets and it's really really not actually that bad even on the side streets you still get the vibe you still get to see the people it's something different you feel more close to people it feels like more like you can breathe in the atmosphere the 15 euro mixed grill we had was one of the side streets you can also find chinese food italian food any sort of food really and what we ended up having most of the time is chinese noodles because they were amazing like oh my god they were so delicious they only cost about eight to nine euros with toppings and there's always a queue at those chinese places in particular one of them on a side street there are ways of drinking and eating a lot cheaper so i definitely recommend that number four on my list was places to drink i really did cover that in the third section long story short you can find the drinks on the side street they're a lot cheaper not necessarily always in the big market what i noticed is that at the cocktail bars there are open space and they're in the market there are loads of tables it feels a bit more claustrophobic to me than going to a side street where there are like three tables outside and there's a little bit of space and you can watch the people going by and you'll find that in Amsterdam there are quite a few interesting people so I would always choose that over the bigger bars number five safe places to smoke I didn't actually smoke marijuana uh, when I've been there I had some cookies and mostly lollies but they didn't do anything major to me. If you want to try it in the cafe bars, you would find that they actually have a menu with different pots that you can try. And you will see by the atmosphere in the coffee bar, it's a safe place because there are bars with loud young people that don't look that great and the service is not that great. It sort of gives a bad vibe and there is your typical coffee bar with people over 25 most likely that go there to try it in a safe environment so definitely listen to your instinct and the vibe that the place sends you and look on the menu and ask for information because if you open a menu and you see all the options and then a nice lady or gentleman comes to you and you want to know more information and you ask them and they explain to you nicely that would be the perfect environment number six places to visit and don't visit. There are tons of places of course to visit in Amsterdam and tons of things to do. One of my favorite things to do was the Boathouse Museum and 
I also did a vlog about Amsterdam so you can see all the stuff I did. I'll link it down below. You can go watch that after this video. It definitely gives you a great vibe. Maybe it's just me but I always have this sick interest in other people's homes. Like I always go down the street and look at people's windows. It always makes me wonder what sort of memories people have created there. How does it look like inside? What is the vibe? And if you're into that sick shit, you can definitely get you a shot here. But this particular one, ever since the people died, it just stayed the same. Everything is the same, the furniture is the same, the pictures are the same. And it just, it was just transformed into a museum. So it's absolutely wonderful. I definitely give that a thumbs up. Another thing you can try is the dungeon. I haven't tried it, but if it's anything like the one in London, then it should be great. Also, boat trips. You would find that boat trips are actually quite expensive. It's about 50 or 60 euros. You can find romantic boat trips and you can find boat trips where you just have dinner and that includes they have a pizza night, they have a burger night, they have a steak night, they have a tasty cheese a night and that usually happens in the evening after the sun goes down where you can see basically Amsterdam lit from the water. We only tried the daytime one and it was pretty cool. It was only about I think it was about 15 euros maybe and it was quite a long time I think it was an hour it was supposed to be an hour but I think it was just over an hour. One thing I would definitely recommend is the Believe It or Not Museum. I think it has about four or five floors. You can find all sorts of weird shit there. I'm not even gonna spoil it for you. I did that end up with my vlog. It has all sorts of interactive things. At the end at the top floor you'll find a 5D cinema which has a little bit of a thumbs down because it was more smooth than realistic, if you know what I mean. But definitely don't do is the Madame Tussauds Museum. If you're like me and you went to the London Madame Tussauds and you expect the same thing in Amsterdam, well don't. You know when you go at the Madame Tussauds in London and you have all the shops and you have the beverages and the trips um, in a cart that go through the olden days of London and you also have a Sherlock Holmes section that's probably the same I haven't tried it but I presume it's pretty much the same it also has a 4D cinema well Madame Tussauds in Amsterdam has nothing like that it basically has maybe some celebrities that are not in London but other than the wax figures you don't get any other sort of uh, entertainment so it's nothing like it it's 25 euros just like believe it or not museum but it's really not worth the money and it should have been a red flag when we arrived there and the employees were staying outside making deals for us giving us cheaper prices for us to go in that definitely has a thumbs down on my list. Number seven, shopping. If you're a girl and you like shopping, that is the paradise because there are lots and lots and lots of shops on the side street. Basically, there are the streets that are called the night streets and they are full of shops. You can find really, really nice clothes and they're really really expensive, nice boots and clothes, 200, 300 euros. You can also find cheaper clothes, reasonable price, but not many really. You'll find anything you can think of. If you're a Marvel fan, there's a Marvel shop there and it's really cool. But the stuff are pretty pricey, so definitely get that extra cash with you. If you necessarily want to go to a mall, there is one big mall in Amsterdam that I visited. It's quite far. But like I was saying before, you can get a tram, it will take you there maybe 25 minutes. I think that mall has about 5 or 6 sections. And you also find some offers on clothes, but it's not going to be anything that amazing. So you definitely need that extra cash with you. Number 8, walking about. I don't know how much as a tourist you can rely on your internet to guide you throughout the city. But Wi-Fi is not all that great and I had 3G for... Some of the days, my internet provider, which is 3 here in the UK, had an offer of 5 euros unlimited internet per day. So I used it for some of the days. But I had to rely on the map and I think 
you should do. By the way, if you are with your internet provider, which is three, there are uh, certain countries that they provide unlimited data for. And at the time I went, Amsterdam wasn't one of them, but they changed that in October, so you should be fine now. What you need to know is that if you follow the canals, usually you end up in the same place. If you remember the direction you're going into, no matter which street out of the nine streets you are, you'll pretty much end up in the same place. If you follow the canals, basically you will never get lost. Number nine is the red district. We sort of thought it would be sort of depressing to see all the women in the window there and it's just not a nice feeling unless you're looking for something that we weren't looking for. But as so many tourists do, we had to go and see how it was like. So we went once when it wasn't quite dark, not all the girls were out there. Grabbed a couple of drinks and then we decided to go back when it was night time. And what we found is that it wasn't really anything like this cab driver told us. This cab driver that took us round and round for 25 minutes, remember we spoke about it? He offered to be our guide through there and I was thinking, seriously dude, you think I'm that stupid? You think I'm going to be paying you for a 5 minute walk? Not going to happen. It wasn't anything like I was expecting it to be. There were actually more guys with their girlfriends and wives then there were men by themselves. So people just basically go there out of pure curiosity to see how it's like and you feel a tiny little bit awkward but I didn't have time to feel that comfortable because I wasn't actually staring at the girls. No vulgar or sexual behavior from the people looking at them. It's just basically tourists coming to see this attraction point in Amsterdam. Even if you're just like a couple girls, you can go, it's, it's pretty safe really. And number 10 is cake breaks. You probably already know this again, but I'm going to be telling you anyway. When you're walking into the city, there are so many things to do, so many things to see, so many things to visit that you might actually get wrapped around the atmosphere and forget that you need to rest. Put your comfortable shoes on because you walk a lot, obviously, but don't forget to take breaks. My suggestion would be, and I'm telling you this from my mistake and my experience, go out in the morning till the afternoon, visit stuff, enjoy the city, go shopping, then go for a couple hours, have a rest, and then go back for the evening, you know, to grab something to eat, grab drinks, to do whatever you want to do, but it's important that you take the one hour or two hour breaks in the afternoon that was basically it. Those were my 10 main tips if you're planning on visiting Amsterdam. And if you have further questions, please comment down below. Otherwise, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. And I'll see you guys next time.